Cardano has been exploding. With the launch of smart contracts, new projects have been emerging left and right on this ecosystem. And one of them might just be that 50 to 100x unicorn that we're all looking for. So we're going to take a deep look at four DeFi projects being built on Cardano right now with very, very high potential for growth. I'm a huge fan of DeFi because it offers a very clear path to value. With DeFi, it's easy to see the value of the actual project. They're solving a money problem. There's always money behind money problems. So if lending becomes more efficient through DeFi, or DeFi gives underbanked countries access to banking, whichever crypto successfully offers that service will be rewarded handsomely. And we get to invest in them. Lucky us. So let's break down these projects. The first one we're going to talk about is MELD. MELD is a DeFi lending protocol that was launched in March of this year, and it's built on the Cardano network. It's similar to a more well-known project called Aave, which is a crypto lending protocol as well. Both Aave and MELD allow you to either borrow crypto or lend crypto if you're looking to make some passive income. What sets MELD apart from Aave and other DeFi lending services is one huge difference. MELD offers fiat lending and borrowing, just like a normal bank. So a connection with a bank or fiat in general might make you a bit curious as to how this is decentralized because it seems a little bit contradictory that there's fiat services in a DeFi service. Although the way that I look at this is if their fiat services are kept separate from their crypto lending, lending and borrowing, then it doesn't really matter. Mel is also in the process of developing an app that will fully support all of its services. This is another major difference that sets them apart from their competitor. So it seems like Meld offering fiat services as well as this full mobile service shows that they're targeting a wider, more mainstream, maybe a not so crypto savvy audience. And personally, I think it's really nice to see crypto projects starting to focus on user experience, something that, that could definitely use some work with the protocols that we have right now. So from an investing perspective, full functionality adds a little bit more risk due to just the sheer ambition of the project, but it also offers a whole lot more potential upside. I mean, hopefully one day users can't even tell the difference between using a decentralized service and a centralized one. I, I mean, I can only dream at this point. So let's talk about the functions of MELD. Their first function is crypto lending and borrowing. This will work the same as any other crypto lending and borrowing service. Interest on borrowing is based on market demand and the yield that lenders are paid is based on borrowers' interest rates. And then we have fiat lending. As we all know, fiat lending is just regular old lending, except you'll be able to do this in app and peer to peer, which is pretty exciting in itself. So we won't know what kind of interest MELD will pay you for lending your fiat until the launch actually happens, but consider that it's a lending protocol, not a bank, you'll probably get a much higher interest rate than you know a high yield savings account in the US, which is basically zero. And then the third functionality here is fiat borrowing. So MELD offers two different types of fiat borrowing, crypto collateralized loans and crypto collateralized lines of credit. Both have the same approval process. You basically just need to put up two times your desired loan or credit amount in crypto to be approved. So let's say you want to borrow $100 in, in fiat you would need to put up $200 in crypto as collateral and able to do that. Now, another nice feature of their fiat borrowing is they use smart contracts for repayment. So once your loan is repaid, you immediately get your crypto collateral back. Now, here's the potential of MELD. So the best way that we can estimate the potential here is by comparing it to the leading lending protocol, which is Aave. There's one problem, though. MELD is in the middle of its ISPO, so we don't really know its market cap. Luckily though, a Reddit user calculated an estimate based on the length in epochs of the ISPO, the initial stake pool offering, against the price of ADA and the total amount of MELD. Based on this calculation, we can assume a market cap of $65 million when ADA is about $2 per coin that is at launch. And based on these calculations, MELD would be about 1 60th the size of Aave at launch. This means that we could be looking at a 60x potential if it were to just match the size of Aave. But here's the kicker. Aave doesn't provide fiat services, so it's hard to compare the two, and this means MELD may have even more potential to pass Aave. Now let's say you want to get some MELD tokens. How do you do it? If you join in on the ISPO, all you need to do is delegate your ADA into a MELD stake pool using a Daedalus or a Euroi wallet. You just stake your coins there, you stake your ADA, and then MELD will be airdropped to your wallet based on the amount that you stake. 
no risk in doing it, and you'll get a little bit of coins. So of course, once the token launches, you'll be able to buy it outright as well. But we need to say that this is still a high risk investment. So always do your own due diligence, not a financial advisor, all of those disclaimers. Also, if you are interested in finding out which Cardano projects I end up buying personally, make sure you join my Patreon link below. In there, I go even more in depth in my research. I post buy alerts. We have a huge community of investors who are constantly talking about potential investments to dive into. It's very exciting, very fun. That'll be linked down in the description. Now, the second project that we're going to talk about is Cody. Cody is a payment network built to support the digitization of any currency and the creation of any token or stablecoin. Any currency supported by the Cody network can be transacted by merchants using Cody's payment gateways. Now, this might sound like a lot because that kind of was a lot, but in a nutshell, Cody provides payment solutions for anyone looking to pay or receive crypto or stable coins as payment. And even more in a nutshell, a nutshell within a nutshell, Cody is looking to be the link between normal commerce and crypto. The link. It's very exciting. <laughs> On top of this, Cody even provides users the opportunity to issue their own stablecoin. Now, there's not a whole lot of information on this. I'm very curious as to how this will work, but we'll have to wait to find out some more information on that. Now, being the conduit between crypto and commerce is huge, but the thing that makes Cody especially special is one key partnership, a partnership with Cardano to build AdaPay. Because of this, we're gonna be focusing on the value of AdaPay for the rest of this little breakdown not so much Cody as a whole. So starting with the applications of AdaPay. For anyone who is familiar with Cardano, you'll know that one of the biggest goals is to bring economic infrastructure to third world countries. Countries that don't have any or can't afford the expensive infrastructure required for a stable fiat currency. I mean, besides the cost to make actual like dollar bills, which is between about six cents and 14 cents per bill, governments need central banks, treasuries, and federal reserves to properly have a currency. That is a tall order for many countries. This is where AdaPay comes in. They would be the front end application for currency in underbanked countries. You can kind of think of AdaPay as like the Venmo or the Cash App or PayPal for these underbanked countries. Now here's the potential. We can't do any direct market cap comparisons for two reasons. First, many crypto payment solutions are centralized and you can't really make a comparison. And second, the value that Cody brings is correlated to AdaPay and any other future partnerships that we just simply don't know of yet. So because we know that Charles Hoskinson is already working directly with Cody on AdaPay, Cody's potential as of now is very correlated to the success of Ada. So if you're really into Ada and the mission that they have, you may very well be very interested in Cody as well and the potential that is there. The Cody token, if you're interested in purchasing it, can actually already be purchased on most major exchanges, including KuCoin, which I've linked down in the description below if you'd like to save on trading fees. But again, that is a high risk investment. I have to say that. The next project that we're gonna talk about is Liquid. So, so with Meld, I mentioned that it's difficult to compare other lending or borrowing protocols such as Aave due to that fiat difference. Well, with Liquid, it is a lending and borrowing protocol being built on Cardano that we can compare directly to Aave. So this makes things a little bit easier. So Liquid does liquidity pool lending, hence the name. A liquidity pool is essentially an automated middleman between a lender and a borrower. So a bunch of lenders put their crypto into a pool of money and borrowers pay an interest rate to borrow from that pool. The interest rate is paid by the borrowers to the lenders. And this rate fluctuates automatically in relation to the changes in demand for lending or borrowing on any given day. Basically, if the, if the demand goes up, borrowing rates go up automatically. This removes the need to match lenders and borrowers and completely automates and streamlines any lending and borrowing needs. Now, this isn't anything new. Like I said, Aave is already doing this and they're the top dog in this space right now. And frankly, it's also pretty similar to KuCoin's auto lend feature, which I use every single day. I'll pin a tutorial above. The difference between Aave and Liquid is Aave is built on Ethereum and Liquid is built on Cardano but they're essentially doing the exact same thing. So here's the potential. Due to Liquid not being released yet, we can't use its current market cap to like estimate potential growth, but we can compare it to Aave. Aave runs on Ethereum and has a market cap of about $3.9 billion. That's about 92 times smaller than Ethereum's market cap. 
if Liquid becomes the Ave of Cardano, we can assume a potential market cap of about $680 million, which is still massive. Liquid is still in the testnet phase and hasn't ironed out a lot of their systems yet, so the information is still a little bit limited, and this is, of course, a very high-risk investment. So if you're interested in it, just be aware of all the risks. Make sure you do your own due diligence, and if you are interested in getting the token, you'll have to wait for them to launch, where you can then provide ADA as liquidity to earn their LQ token. Now, next, the final item on the list is Empower. Now, what is it? It's a DeFi housing investment platform. It's a very unique idea. So it doubles as an investing platform and a housing funding program for Africa, which is, again, inspired by Cardano's similar aspirations to help develop Africa. So Empower is, in a nutshell, connecting the DeFi world with a system that can be best explained comparing it to a traditional REIT. So investing in a REIT is basically investing in a company who is investing your money and other investors' money into real estate for you, and you get paid returns on that real estate. Similar to how an oil ETF invests in oil companies for you. Empower is using this structure to create a bridge between Africa, the African real estate market, and DeFi. Like I said, it's a very unique idea. So with them, you'll be able to buy a coin that funds the building of new housing in Africa, and then you're entitled a portion of the rent or the profits from those investments. Now, there still are a lot of questions about how Empower will work. I mean, how do investors get profits? Are profits paid out in the form of appreciation of the coin or actually a distribution? Are profits paid out perhaps in uh, some kind of airdrop? What does the back end look like? How can I trust that people are actually building these houses, that you're not just buying air? And I think these are all questions that you must get an answer to before you buy anything like this. And then on top of this, I know there's been a lot of news about crypto lending potentially being an investment security. Well, investing in a token that pays you a profit based on rents collected is definitely an investment security. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how they battle that and how exactly this one pans out. And of course, these are all questions any investor needs the answer to before going ahead and making an investment. I really wanted to mention this one because it highlights the creativity of what crypto projects can potentially do. And it's just really an exciting time to be alive and be able to follow these projects and invest in the interesting ones. It's just, it's just exciting. So, so that's gonna do it for today. That's my list of interesting DeFi projects being built on Cardano. This is like a perfect storm for me. I love DeFi and its potential, and I'm a bit of a fanboy of Cardano. So I'm gonna be excited to see where these coins and projects head in the future and which ones end up being those 50 to 100x unicorns that we're all looking for. Again, if you want even more content and to see what I'm up to, go ahead and join the Patreon link below. I would like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.